IASP has the unique distinction of bringing together professionals in the field of cooperation and health sciences to promote scientific study of cooperation and stimulate interest in population and health issues facing the country. Today's conference, which is jointly organized by IASP and PRC, is a step in that direction. We are honored to have with us Professor Masudi Saab, Dean Academic Affairs, as our chief guest. Sir, you accepted our invitation to inaugurate this conference despite your pressing academic and administrative assignments at a very short time. We express our sincere thanks to you for greeting us on this noble function. <laughs> it is our privilege to welcome our registrar, Dr. Miyun Sar Ahmed. You are showing a keen interest in the development of the Population Research Center as an independent entity within the university. And it is always, and he is always helpful in timely resolving the administrative matters of the PLC. We are honored to have you with us, sir. I extend a very warm welcome to my friend and colleague, Professor Suresh Shalma, President IASP, and who is also the director of the Population Research Center Institute of Economic Growth, uh, University of Delhi. It was he who floated the idea of organizing this conference in Srinagar. I truly believe that such platform as a cornerstone in the contributor contributing to the process of policy reform. So yes, I am extremely delighted that the ISP has been revival regional chapters for this year. I consider that local and regional chapters, such a northern region conference, are ex extremely important. It is unique opportunity to ISP bringing to us each year to allow the identify and address the sub-national issues. These sub-national uh, sub issues go on frame, national agenda and policies. Coming to the conference this year, Northern Region Conference is theme population, development and health, Northern Region status and challenges ahead. <coughs> the linkages of population development and health have been fascinating to me in the rapidly ch ch uh, changing global the region, uh, regional demography and socioeconomic status. Each of the phenomena can be both driving force or consequences for other two. Although the Northern Region Conference, we have a special opportunity to make a strong case to improvement in the health and equality life and the large debate, population and development. It is imperative to that health and population development are viewed in the integrated manner and given the rightful place, all the form where social policy of the country is being discussed. Allow to me bringing you some of the facts that health and demography and de development dynamic context of Northern state. The recent SRS estimated suggested that state and union territory of Northern India we have recorded highest percentage of decline with respect to crude birth rate between 2008 and 2018. Among these states, the maximum decline has been noted for Delhi, followed by Jammu and Kashmir. However, Uttar Pradesh, particularly Eastern UP, continue recorded maximum birth rate in India. The, this is the time to has been reported 28 per thousand population. It board, uh, boldly pointed the significant interstate value, uh, valuability even the regional level. Although the regional level, Northern India on average recorded comparatively lower share the older population that South and West state. The state Himachal and Punjab exists close to 10% share of the elderly population in their total population. These estimated closer than the southern state. The regional has been made significant achievement magnitude the infant death, but the state of Uttar Pradesh continue to uh, record highest share infant death, the total death at the regional level. At the national level too, it is only the second highest after the Madhya Pradesh. 
recorded sear booming sear 14% all the death in the state of infant death drawing some fact from the uh, fifth round of national family health survey with only 33% household where the member of covered health insurance northern india has been lowest health insurance coverage across the region of india the state jammu and kashmir unfortunately uh, recorded lowest percentage of this uh, across the other northern region only 30% household share the least one member insured for the health this has serious impl uh, implication the finance financial protection against the catastrophic health expenditure and must be viewed critical from the health economics policy standpoint the women participation in the household decision making has been recorded in the lowest in the northern indian state the persistent particular norms discourse women empowerment is identify a key area work upon northern region state in india today's conference definitely reminds me of my three decade old uh, learning of one theory that was those days our teachers used to teach us the malthusian theory of population and where malthus says that the human population grows geometrically and the food resources grow arithmetically and then there were certain checks propounded by him which we call as pass two checks and the negative checks and probably the pass two checks world over have been controlled by different innovations like industrial revolution like green revolution white revolution other things where the universe tried to conduct a balance between the population and the resources but still we all see that the population gre population growth which normally certain countries consider as a boom because of we consider them as the product to mouth and that different levels is it brings a lot of social issues in the society when we see when we cannot keep a balance between the resources and the population there are lot of social deviances which occur in the society we see a lot of crimes we see a lot of other issues which crop up in the society but uh, when we talk of the population and development and then we talk of the health we again see that there is a imbalance between the services provided to the population vis-a-vis -vis the health few years back i was working in delhi and i visited a patient in the aims hospital i confirmed about his admission in the ward i was told that he is in a geriatric ward for me geriatric ward was an unfamiliar term uh, but uh, somehow i use i went there it was in some other block i went there i see the patient is there which were all in the old age and i could conclude that this uh, treatment or this uh, service which is being provided to the elderly population in the form of the geriatric ward so probably now planners and policy makers have again come up with a solution to the old age population in the form of health services which we consider as the geriatric services or the geriatric ward probably in our own ut of jnd kate is yet to come and i yet to see in our uh, main hospitals but uh, again this is a issue that the life expectancy of the population brings in itself other issues i being a so student of sociology i see that there are certain social issues associated with the elderly population though in kashmir there is slight uh, we slightly treat because of certain again because of certain in social inhibitions 
we uh, keep them at our own homes, how do we treat them, it is only God and the family knows. But in other parts of the country, we see that lot of old age homes have come up where the elderly people are being placed and rehabilitated there. So we see that there are issues related to the population growth vis-a-vis -vis health. Again, if we see that a major issue which has come up with the population growth, we see that there is an imbalance between the gender. We see the dwindling issue of sex ratio, particularly in Northern India. We see alarming situation in j &K also. Uh, somebody was telling me it has now come down beyond, below 900 also. It is 860 or something. So we see that with the population growth, there are a lot of issues which come up, which creep up in the societies, which we, the academicians, researchers, are academic institutions need to address. We see that at the University of Kashmir, we have established a good number of departments, particularly the, in the social science, we have economics, we have sociology, we have social work, we have women, gender studies, and some other departments which uh, try to build a certain academic resources vis-a-vis -vis the social issues which are faced by the society at large. We in University of Kashmir, we are the oldest university. Rather, we have taken birth just after independence in 1948. And uh, we have a great responsibility, we have bigger responsibility to address the issues which are confronted by the society at large. Within our limited resources, because it is a public institution where we have to uh, see the issues of fee to be collected from the students also, we try to do our best in the academic and research. Our all departments in the social sciences are, I cannot say that there is a issue of human resource which we have very recently we have advertised the position at the level of professors and associate professors and assistant professors as well. We are trying to equip our departments with the human resources, with the infrastructure, with the other uh, students and scholar-centric facilities and inshallah under the direction of Honorable Vice Chancellor. We try to create the resources which will help the academics and their search and institutions within the Union Territory of JNK or at the national level. The population studies, uh, its importance, it has been there since times immem immemorial or uh, right from the day mankind stepped on this planet. But with passage of time, or to be more specific, with increasing population, we realized this realization was more intense to study population or to have these demographic studies particularly the 20th century. The developments of this century did intensify this need to study populations or to study the demography. Obviously, because some of the developments which did take place in this century, I would like to just point out some of the developments which did take place, which resulted in the increased population growth and ultimately intensified the requirement and the need to, stud to study the populations. If we see the developments in healthcare, the development of vaccines, antibiotics, that was one aspect which resulted in, I should uh, uh, kindly permit me to use this crude word, there was population explosion. So that was one of the major factors. And then if you see the developments in agricultural sciences, and particularly the role of our country, India, the tremendous contribution of agricultural scientists in, cre in increasing the uh, yields, not only the yields, but 
increasing the nutritive value of the crops, increasing their availability around the air. For my friends who are from this region, from this uh, valley, there was a time when we used to see watermelons only for a specific period of time, just for a month or so. And now it's available around the year. It contributed to a balanced nutrition. And it contributed to what we say this population growth. And let us not see this population growth as my earlier friends also pointed out towards this thing, that let us not see only as a sort of a problem. Let us see other dimensions of this demographer, experts in population studies, they point out, they highlight this thing, the biggest resource, human resource of India. We are going to step into uh, that era. A significant population of this country will be youth, the biggest human resource. The only thing is how to utilize this valuable resource. And these, these were some of the uh, developments which did take place in the 20th century, which resulted in population explosion. And then there is no denying the fact and balance is necessary to be maintained between the population growth and uh, the uh, economic growth, of course. If the population growth is unbridled, it's uncontrolled, so necessarily we will have to face the music. Population studies, now it's established, irrespective of the fact uh, the, the, or the area which we are working in, biological sciences, social sciences, management sciences, environmental sciences, ultimately anything we study, it's for sustenance of mankind on this planet. And for every researcher, it's very essential to before conceiving any project, before formulating any project, it's very essential to have this demographic data before him. Or to put it in a simpler way, if I conceive a project, if I work on that project, generate grants for any project, and then ultimately come out with some research output, which doesn't have many takers, so it's of no use. So for that purpose, purpose, it's very essential to have critical study of this demography so that anything I generate in my lab or by conducting surveys or by doing any uh, researchable, working on any researchable issue, it's very essential. I must have, I, before planning, I must have this information before me. So particularly in these agricultural sciences, once we see as I uh, made a mention of this, crops or varieties with high nutritive value have been evolved. If we evolve anything, if we evolve any crop variety, then it doesn't have that acceptance in that particular population. Uh, th I think that whole efforts, that's a wastage of resources. So what I, I, I would like to re-emphasize this thing. A critical study of the population is very essential for any uh, researcher. And population studies, it's very essential. They don't only help us to make predictions of the future, but they also help us to say trace the past also, or to peep into our uh, past times. So all these things are very essential in order to generate a very valuable research output. In this, what we know as Venice of the East and the land of Lakes and Gardner, Srinagar, on behalf of the IASP and my personal behalf, I join others in welcoming you all to this opening ceremony of the IASP's North Region Conference. I hope your journey was safe and you all are comfortable in your spaces. 
I thank you all for taking your time out to be with us in this conference and your participation and presence both are very valuable to us at IAPS. We look forward to your presence and participation in all our events that will happen across the year of the IASP. On behalf of the IASP, I also would take this opportunity to say that we would be bringing out seminar proceedings and we would come up with a small uh, research brief based on the findings of this two days deliberation which we intend to take to the policy makers and programmers in the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and other organizations who would take these findings and inputs that would emerge from these deliberations. And I hope some of which would be translated into the future programs and interventions. So with that, I take this opportunity once again to thank you, all of you, for coming and being with us sharing your knowledge and experiences, debating, participating, and sometimes, as I say, off the record, fighting. Academic professional fighting is always good. More strategic fighting in terms of ideology, ideas, to enrich a knowledge, and also be to develop the discipline stronger day by day. So I'm looking forward to these two days personally, as well as as a group along with all of you. And with that, thank you very much for coming and have a great day, guys. Thank you.